But the invasions of Africa, this is what began to change things. Let me tell you just quickly and run through these. The Hyksos, who came in and were kicked out around 1500 B.C. The Assyrians, who came in. The Persians, who came in. The Greeks, under Alexander, who came in around 333. The Romans, who uh, defeated the Greeks. You remember when Cleopatra was killed, uh, actually, uh, by the Romans. So, so uh, 30, that was around 30 B.C. when Cleopatra was killed. So uh, the Romans took over then and run Egypt uh, as a colony uh, from Rome for almost four or five hundred years until the African people, the original people in Egypt, asked, this is, the, this is what we did, we asked the Arabians, the Arabians to come over to Africa and help us defeat the Romans. That's the history people don't realize, right? So, so you say, how did the Arabs get, to get there? They got there in 639, this era, A.D. 600, so they've been there a long time, but 639 A.D. They came over because the Romans had this occupation of Egypt. And the idea that the Africans had was if we could uh, organize with the Arabs to throw off the Romans, uh, we could then have our independence. So uh, what did they do? Uh, under the authority of the Arab general, his name was General E-L-L-A-S. -L -L you can look him up, General L. Oz. He was the one who had defeated Jerusalem. And when he had defeated Jerusalem, the Africans said, well, come on down here, and you, since you're warriors, come on down here with your Islamic warriors and let's throw out the Romans. They threw out the Romans and then decided that they wouldn't go home. They said, you know, this is a good place. <laughs> they got all kinds of fruits and vegetables along the Nile River. You know, people got cattle and stuff. It's not desert where, I mean, the, if, you go, if you go to Egypt and you're flying in the air, you look down, Egypt is a, a strip of green along both sides of the Nile River. And, the, and the, on the other side is deserts on both sides. So it's like, wow, here's a country. You can go for hundreds of miles, and it's just fertile, green. They got every plant and fruit you can think of, all the animals you can think of in this green valley, you see. So they said, why should we leave here? So in 641, the Arabs built a fortress, and they named it Cairo. Cairo was the first city built. The, the Arabs didn't build the cities of ancient Egypt. They didn't build Waset. They didn't set up the pyramids. They didn't build the temples of, uh, of Egypt. They built Cairo. And they made Cairo the citadel and the fortress for their penetration throughout Egypt and to other regions, taking over the Africans' land. That, that's, that's how this happened. So this is, so that's why I have here for you the invasions after the Romans, the Arabs came. But the Arabs, when they came, because they were Muslims, they also had to submit to the Ottoman Turks because the Turks came. While the Arabs were in Egypt, the Turks came and took the power from the Arabs and then extended their power even into Sudan. I'm pretty sure they were close to Sudan, uh, to, to, uh, to Darfur. They established all kinds of places throughout Africa, you see. And then, of course, the Turks, they were uh, attacked by the Western Europeans. 
the French and the British. And most people don't realize this, that after the World War, the, the first international European war, you had, uh, the, uh, you had the destruction of the Ottoman Empire. And the Ottoman Empire was, was taken over by, by the French and the British. And the French, French also invaded, uh, Napoleon invaded Egypt in 1799. And, and he, didn't, he didn't stay long because the British took over from him. But while he invaded, his soldiers found the Rosetta Stone. That's the stone that had the three different uh, writings, languages on them that allowed people to decipher the ancient text, you see. But, but, but the point that I'm making here is that the Ottomans lost their whole empire after World War I. And when they lost their empire, two Europeans divided up their empire. Sykes, S-Y-K-E-S, -E and Picot, P-I-C-O-T. Picot, Sykes and Picot. We always talk about the Berlin Conference, 1884 and 85. That's good, because that's what divided up Africa. But what divided up the Ottoman Empire that made Iraq, Iraq, Iran, Iran, Afghanistan, Afghanistan, Syria, Syria, et cetera, et cetera, was a Sykes-Picot agreement between the French and the, and the British, you see. So, 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 so Egypt was essentially left alone uh, until, of course, uh, the, the British, as I said, the British were in charge, and they were in charge of a population that had, uh, that had been mixed with Turks and Greeks and, um, and all the other uh, Persians, all the other people who had invaded Greece. So what we see, and then of course, when the overthrow of the king that had been set up by the British happened, the person who took over was Nasser. General Nasser, a military man who was Arab, became the leader of Egypt. But Egypt in antiquity was not an Arab country. Egypt in antiquity, meaning in the most ancient times, was black. And the farther back you go, the blacker Egypt gets. So you, so you're, you're talking. So I'm gonna show you. I'm show you some images. But I want to let you know this because you got this, this. If you know this, you and you understand that Imhotep was not an Arab. Hatshepsut was not an Arab. Ramses II was not an Arab. King Tutankhamun was not an Arab. They were black people. They were black-skinned people. So when you understand that, you understand that both ancient Egyptians and Nubians were the same people, same complexion, same skin, same skin people. The, the integration of the Arab population into Egypt was what I call a subterfuge host. This is a new term for you. 